24 continues saying this. So they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. After they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed back to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had now completed. After they arrived and gathered the church together, they reported everything God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they had spent a considerable time with the disciples there in Antioch. So this is Paul and Barnabas, their first missionary journey. They get sent out from Antioch. Antioch was like their new life. It was their sending church. It was their church that they became leaders in. They learned how to disciple other people. They were then sent out. And and they go to all these cities to tell people about Jesus. They tell people, hey, Jesus is the king of the world. He has the power to restore. He has the power to heal. And they would go to cities and some people became believers. Some people said, I'm in. Sign me up. I want to follow Jesus. And then because of either persecution or because they said, okay, we've planted the gospel here. We're going to move on. They moved on to the next city. And then they would tell more people about Jesus. And then they'd get persecuted. And then they'd get kicked out. So they would go to the next city. Eventually they'd get to Derby. And instead of, coming, instead of going back from Derby to the end of the road, instead of taking a straight trip back from Derby back to Antioch, they actually circled back going out of their way to revisit all the disciples that they had made in all those cities. And they start churches in those cities. They were church planters. And one thing I want you to see is when... Paul and Barnabas, when they went to these cities, when they planted churches, you know what they didn't do? Like, they didn't look for a building, okay? They didn't look for a building. Now, sometimes people are like, oh, so you start churches. So you help leaders find churches, like church buildings? Like, no, we don't build church buildings. No, we don't, like, just help church leaders, like, find a nice, cool venue for them to, you know, organize worship events. Like, that's not what we do. We train leaders, to learn how to share their story, to learn how to share the gospel, learn how to contextualize the gospel, to serve their city, to be a a, a visible, tangible representation of the good news of Jesus, to make disciples, to train those disciples to make other disciples, to support one another, and to carry the mission on in their city. And so, yeah, we don't build buildings, and we don't even set up worship experiences. We plant churches. And so when when Patrick says that we have a vision of planting 500 churches, it's like, what does that even mean? What what, what constitutes a church? Have you ever wondered that? Like, does a church need a building? Does a church need to be this certain size in order to be a church? Well, this is how we define a church. In case you're wondering, I've wondered this question for a long time, but this is what a church, this is how we define a church. We're talking about planting 500 churches. This is how we define a church, a new life. So a church is a spiritual family growing in surrendered obedience to all the teachings of Jesus Christ who gather together regularly under biblically recognized leadership for the purpose of fulfilling the great commission, meaning making disciples with a great commandment heart, loving God, loving people. So when we look at the New Testament, when we look at God's word, And we see, what is the description of a church? We don't see a building with a steeple on it, right? We don't see a a worship band with lasers and smoke machines, and we don't see any of that. We see a network of people that are following after Jesus, that that are inviting their friends and their families to be a part of it and developing leaders and sending other leaders out to start more spiritual families, And in order for that to happen, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas, okay, they had to take great risks, right? They had to leave home. They had to train people and tell other people who didn't like Jesus about Jesus. They ended up being persecuted. And a new life, we're committed to taking great risks like them. And so are our residents. You know, you saw in that video Jeff Sadler planting a church in the Portland metro area. He's got six kids. Like, who plants a church when you got six kids? He recently retired 25 years in the Air Force. He's got to figure out, so what do I do next with my career and my return? How do I pay to, to feed all my family members? And he says, well, God's calling me to plant a church, and I know it's not a great career move. right? I know it's no, there's no guaranteed income here, but if that's what God's calling me to do, Jesus, if you're the good shepherd, I think the safest thing I can do is to take a risk and plant a church. Joe Cartwright Saw him in the video, last guy in that video. He's got three kids. 
He's been working at churches for the past 10 years. Most of the churches couldn't pay him. So he's just worked at odd you know, jobs like at Target. He's been driving Uber and DoorDash. In fact, this past year, he moved him and his family into an RV because that's what they could afford in order to participate in our residency, get the training to order to plant Chase Church in Wilson, North Carolina. They're taking risks. They're taking risks, and they come here to New Life, and they say, yeah, we want to we take risks like New Life. They come here to the building and say, you guys take risks. Yeah, we, we, we are a church that takes risks. That's why we bought an old Budweiser building that we're sitting in today. Right? And when we proposed this idea, people were like, are you crazy? This doesn't make any sense. Why would you build a building where you're going to be portable for the rest of your life? Like hanging out with church planters, I hear this all the time. We can't wait until we have our own building so we don't have to set up and tear down all the time. We built a building where we would set up and tear down every single week. That's crazy. That's a risk. But we do it because our church leadership said, what is the best way that we can be a steward of the resources that God has given to us? Would it be to build a traditional church building that's maybe used a couple times a week? Or, or would, would a better use of our money and our resources be to build a, a sports complex, a, a community hub, where hundreds and thousands of people are able to use it every single year? And when they come here, have the opportunity to experience and discover God daily. Yeah, it was risky, but we think when you're following the voice of the Good Shepherd, the safest thing to do is to take a risk. 